All right, so there are a lot of changes in energy that takes place within a reaction. And sometimes uh, chemists talk about it via numbers and words, but sometimes it's actually easier to illustrate it using graphs and pictures. So we're going to talk about energy diagrams. Um, and this is actually what an energy diagram looks like. So on the y-axis, we have energy. And on the x-axis, we're going to talk about reaction progress, or the time uh, going from reactants to products. So in this particular reaction, this reaction is unique. Um, in this reaction, the reactants are pretty high in energy. Um, they are, it seems like it's pre they're pretty unstable. They have high energy content. So as reactions are gonna, reactants are going to proceed to the products, they're going to have to increase in energy to get to the activated complex. Don't forget the activated complex is the transition state or the, the change between the reactants to products. It's that in-between stage or the transition stage. Um, so they're actually very unstable and high in energy. So we're going to have to get some energy to get there. And we're going to call that the activated, activation energy, or E sub A. So we're going to get that energy, and then we're going to go down to our more stable, less energetic products. Okay, so we're actually losing energy in this reaction. We're going to release energy. We're going to call this an exothermic reaction, because um, energy is actually being exiting from the reaction. So our delta H, which is our um, symbol telling us the difference between the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products, is going to be negative. Our energy is dropping. So anytime you see the fact that this energy is negative, or delta H is negative, or um, energy is being released, then we know that it's an exothermic reaction. Energy is exiting. OK, so there's one thing in here, too, that we have to indicate, and that is catalysts. Catalysts actually change the reaction mechanism, or the pathway of the reaction going, the reaction going from reactants to products. So let's illustrate that on this. OK, so our it's not changing the energy of the reactants or products. It's just changing the activated complex. So the, if we have a catalyst, the activated complex is going to be different. So um, it's not going to be as high in energy. So this green line would indicate the new pathway that the catalyst would take. That would catalyst would use. So I'm going to write that down. Um, in biology, you might know catalyst as an as uh, an enzyme. It's basically the same thing. And so our delta, our E A is going to be lowered, and this actually increases the rate or how fast a reaction is going to take place. So this is going to be our new E A. So it doesn't require as much energy. All right, but there's also other ways to illustrate or other different types of reactions that, um, that we're going to talk about using the energy diagrams. Let's go over here. Um, <clears throat> here's a different energy diagram. It's, it's, it looks quite different. Our reactants, in this case, are very low in energy. They're very stable. And our products are higher in energy, a little bit less stable. So um, we're going to call this an endothermic reaction, meaning energy is going to have to enter the reaction requ requiring a lot of energy. Our delta H is going to be positive because our reactants are lower in energy than our products. So we're actually going to increase our energy. Delta H is positive. Our activated complex is, also, is still going to be very high in energy, um, as always. And our activation energy is actually going to be very great in this case. Um, if we were to add a catalyst here to, to increase the reaction rate, um, the pathway would be lowered, still higher than the products, but lowered. And our activation energy would be from here. That would be our new activation energy. Okay. So catalysts um, would increase the rate of this reaction also, but not the, act the activated complex would not be lower in energy than the products. It would always be higher because it's less stable. Um, so these, these energy diagrams are the, two, the main, two main ones that you're going to see in class, the endothermic and the exothermic. And um, hopefully this will help you understand uh, what they're actually saying, what they're telling you with, within, with reference to energy within uh, reactions.